I mean, which I think is the hard part digging through this on a day by day. You, you, you see it's parts of it not seemingly headed towards a happy ending. Although one thing in terms of the control you mentioned, and I know you've done a fair amount of research on is the central bank digital currencies. I think people are starting to become more familiar with the concept, but perhaps you could break it down, especially for people who are new to it or don't really get what's going on. What, what would you say to folks about those? Well, first of all, they scare the Hades out of me, but you know, initially the monetary system was labor for labor. That's what physical gold and silver are all about. So you do labor, uh, it takes energy and labor to pull the gold and silver out of the ground. It was a tool, especially when they took that into certificates, right? So you had silver certificates, gold certificates, you could go into any bank and convert those certificates into the physical metal. And it was a way for the population to control the government. Because if you didn't like what they were doing, you just went in and converted it. And that created restrictions around what the governments could do. Well, they took that away from us and we went to Federal Reserve notes, which are debt instruments that do not pay interest. Um, you, you could not protect your purchasing power because that was by design, that inflation piece in there, but you still had a level of privacy because if you pay for everything with cash or you're holding cash, you know, you're kind of anonymous. Now the evolution is programmable money. And, you know, that's what really scares me because if you listen and you read their documentation, number one, the government talks about their ability to do lifetime taxes and immediate taxes. They know every single penny that comes in, every single penny that you spend. Uh, and because it's programmable, if they don't like where you're spending it, you simply can't spend it there. Or they can put a date on, you know, this money is only good until this date. So you have to spend it. So for central banks, it does a couple things. Number one, these are their words, not mine. Um, once we're in a digital CBDC, there are no limitations to how low they can push interest rates. So if they want you to spend and you're not spending fast enough, you simply can watch your principal evaporate through negative rates. And what will that inspire you to do? Go out, buy anything that you think would hold value better. Uh, so, and additionally, they would, this is what really scares me more than anything that I've talked about right now. Uh, at the moment, if the central bank makes a policy choice, it takes roughly 18 months working through the system to know if they got the results that they were looking for. But with CBDCs, since they're programmable, uh, frankly, if things don't happen as quickly as they want them, they'll sit there and they'll take or I mean, look at what they're doing right now, right? Can you imagine if they actually controlled the money in your wallet, what that would look like? We were a consumer-driven economy. Oh, you're not consuming. Oh, we're going to make you consume. I mean, they will be adjusting and tweaking this, and they don't care. Because if you look at what they're saying, we are raising rates, period, end of discussion. It, nothing else matters. We're raising those rates, even though all those countries that have been raising rates like crazy, including Mexico, how many times they've raised rates a whole lot more than they have in the US. And has that had any impact on inflation? No. So, you know, even though they know that what they're doing isn't working, they are hell bent on doing it anyway. Imagine if they had their finger on your wallet. Finally and you had no options. No. I'm sorry, what were you gonna say? Well, no, just, uh, just thinking they could finally get that 110% tax rate that I think they've always secretly wanted. <laughs> and although, fortunately, Lynette, obviously some things that are not ideal out there, although on the positive side, I like, it's been nice learning about you from some of the solutions, getting off grid, and I know you have a new website up called beyondgoldandsilver.com where you share some of what you've learned there and perhaps you could touch on that a bit and let people know about some of the things that they that can be done to mitigate against this 
Oh my goodness. I mean, there's so many simple things, but what we're trying to do with that website is to build a huge library that can meet people wherever they are. So if you are absolutely 100% new to, to sustainability, whether it's growing food or energy or any of that, then at whatever level you're at, whether you're new or you're in adv or you're advanced, we're trying to meet you where you are and build a huge library to help people be as independent and self-sufficient as possible. Uh, I think that's like critically important. My journey started with that in 2008 when I saw that the system died, and I said, "No, we've got to." you know, this is it. We got to get ready. And I personally was never a gardener. I mean, that was just never my thing. And I can't really say that I'm a gardener now, but I certainly know a whole lot more today than I did back in, when I started this journey. I bought bought my first property, the one in Phoenix that you were at in 2010. Yep. Um, but it's everything. And, and up here in my bug out location, which is completely off grid, um, we're showing you what we're doing as we're developing the whole property too. So there's more than just solar. Not everybody can afford solar. We're going to be putting in some hydroelectric with water. Um, so simple things. And Angus, who is up here with me 24-7, I mean, he lives on the mountain uh, now. And he's a mountain man. And, and he's used to doing things on a shoestring. So it's also at whatever monetary level that you can come in at from zero money. How do you do these things to, okay, in an ideal world, I have all the money I need and I can, I can just build the system and everything in between. So we are trying to give everybody the tools that they need to be as self-sufficient and independent as possible. And, and you got to get started on it ASAP, ASAP, because... I don't, I mean, how much time, who, who can say? I mean, I can't say that it's going to be 7.35 tomorrow morning, but quite honestly, the system is fragile and they're making, as always, some extraordinarily bad choices to push us over the edge so that we have a big enough crisis to scare the crap out of people. And I, and I do think 2020 was a big test how far can we push people? How far can we go? Um, and, you know, and they were taking notes. I, I don't think that was a coincidence. Yeah, and uh, certainly I appreciate what you're doing there because as I can testify to firsthand, uh, you were kind enough to invite me to your home last year and you're not just reading this stuff on the web. You've been implementing it and that was without even seeing your off-grid location. So... Again, people can find out more information at Beyond Gold and Silver from someone who has done quite a bit of this. And uh, it's great that you're now sharing that with others so that they can get started. And perhaps before we wrap up, you could also mention your other site, which focuses more on the economics and the gold and silver, just so people can know what you're doing there and uh, how to reach you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, because this is really what started the other journey. Like I said, I'm, I'm not really a gardener. That's not really my thing, but through my work with ITM trading and I've, I've been there since 2002. So I recently uh, celebrated my 20th year there, but I've been in these markets on some level since 1965, 1964. So you know, it was my work there and I 100% knew that the system died in 2008. And I, and I would go up against anybody with that, with all sorts of data to show you. That's my nickname is Data Gal. And that is really what pushed me on this sustainable journey because I, I didn't think I'd see it in my lifetime, but I can't even tell you how grateful I am to the universe or to whoever guided me to understanding, you know, banking. And I was a stockbroker and, you know, and I was in precious metals forever and knowing how they move and knowing how they're manipulated. So this is the start. And the foundation really does need to be good money. It really does. Gold and silver, 
you got to have them. They've got to be physical. They've got to be in your possession. And um, just it's it's really important because that can at least buy you some things when nothing else can. But it's that availability piece that makes it so important. So so for me, it's one big hole. It's not this or that. It's it's one big hole. <laughs>